Welcome back to Awesome News TV and today we're going to do the instant match reaction of West Brom nil, Arsenal 6 as Mikel Arteta's Arsenal players really obliterate the West Brom players so let's get right into the highlights. So in terms of the first half, in terms of how Arsenal played, there were a lot of questions about how Mikel Arteta was going to line up Arsenal on his team selection, but then we realised from the formation that Nuno Tavares was going to play on the left-hand side and Kolasinac was going to play as the left centre-back with Chambers, Chambers at right-back and with Tavares in his natural left-back position. And we clearly thought we made the mistake as Arsenal fans thinking it was Nuno Tavares at right back, but it was Kolasinac that played in the centre back position. And then there was a moment to cherish for Aaron Ramsdale as there were already songs for Aaron Ramsdale as the Arsenal fans seem to have taken a liking to Aaron Ramsdale and have a song for him already after he's called into some early action. Then Ramsdale was under a little bit of pressure after he's given a hospital pass by Rob Holding, but it takes a bit too long to clear it, allowing Kenneth Zahore to close down. Luckily for the new Arsenal sign, the ball deflects away out for a throw. And then when it comes to the second part, where Best Brom had some opportunities, the youngster Tom Fellows gets a shot off after a sustained period of pressure for West Brom, forcing Ramsdale into a smart save. The resulting corner is well worked and it's a huge chance for the Baggies to go in front, but a low shot is skewed wide. And then Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang scores the first goal for Arsenal this season, as the goal scorer is Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, but all the credit has to go to Bukayo Saka. The England international is diligent on the edge of the box and gets the shot off that forces Alex Palmer into a low save. He can only tip this out to Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, though he has the easiest tap-in he's ever likely to score to break his Arsenal droughts. And I thought that was an important from Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang to make that run something that was clearly appreciated by the commentator to show what elite striker like Aubameyang does. He didn't wait for Bukayo Saka to score and celebrate, he was ready, he was ready for the goal and that's what a top striker like Aubameyang will do. And then there was a huge chance for Martin Odegaard to score off the ball bounces to him in a box but he hits it into the post at a tight angle. But I think he should have scored that goal because I think he a bit rushed it because it came right at him. If he took a touch and then shots, it would have been a goal in my opinion. But then when it comes to a big chance, Xhaka lobs the ball over the West Brom defence and Aubameyang is in. He just needs to poke the ball past the keeper and it's a certain goal. He can't though and the chance goes begging. But then the second goal goes in for Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, another tap-in, Mohamed Elneny plays a defence splitting pass to Nicola Pepe who runs into the box and fires a low shot, Alex Palmer saves but again only comes straight out to Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang and then finally also get the third goal after also quickly running right here, Saka does well in the left half space in transition to play in Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang who is just on side. He's one on one with Palmer but he has his initial effort saved. The Gabon forward then tried a wild bicycle kick which luckily finds its way to Nicola Pepe who taps it in to make the game safe for the Gunners. And it's half time where Brest Brom is nil, Arsenal is three and you couldn't have Arsenal a much better opening 45 minutes if you're Mikel Arteta. Aubameyang's goal drought is over and so is Arsenal's winning jail unless something truly disastrous happens in the second half. But I do expect a very calm and composed game in the second half. But moving into the second half, I think Arsenal start very well once again and I think that the West Brom tactics were very poor to come and try and do whatever they could and it fell into Arsenal's favour. It was a beautiful goal when Bukayo Saka drifts in field and finds Martin Odegaard who provides a delightful back heel 1-2 to the England international. Hint that Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang was offside in the middle of all that but the Gabon forward left it for Bukayo Saka to finish so all good. And then there were moments where West Brom had some opportunities where Kano Zohore had a good headed chance but Aaron Ramsdale is equal to it and beats it away for a corner. Then it was another beautiful save by Aaron Ramsdale. After Martin of Odegaard falls over on the ball but Aaron Ramsdale saves. He's up to the catch the corner but now looks in some pain after falling awkwardly. Ramsdale was then okay and then fine thankfully and then also do score the second goal with the one player that has scored and completed his hat-trick, 
Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, and Pierre Emerick Aubameyang completes his tri- tri- hat trick, and this is by far the best of the bunch. He's found out left by Ainsley Maitland Niles and curls a brilliant striker into the t- strike into the top corner, and it was a beautiful finish. Then Arsenal hit the ball when it was nearly six as Nicola Pepe races in one on one after a free ball from Lacazette. He tries to chip the keeper, but it's just too high and hits the top of the keeper. But then West Brom concede once more, and Alexandre Lacazette is in on the t- act now. The Frenchman who comes in to replace Granit Xhaka first makes an assist to Nicola Pepe and Nicola Pepe has that great opportunity where he unfortunately hits the bar and then Lacazette gets back onto the axis and the second, three, third time when he has the ball he's racing in from the left hand side onto a Nicola Pepe cutback and it's a beautiful night for the Gunners and then there were opportunities for Arsenal to make substitutes such as Martinelli replacing Pierre, Emerick Aubameyang and two minutes of added time left as well and when the Gunners had that time they had a brilliant victory versus West Brom and it's a good way to have some confidence in the game versus Manchester City but this is going to be a whole new level because West Brom are a championship side and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang is something that I'm happy to see score some goals and it's good that he can get that hat trick, get that confidence and hopefully show Miklos Sessa that he is the player to play in that striker role and show that he is a top level striker. But overall, when it comes to the goals that were scored, I think there was beautiful play. In most of the goals that were scored, there was a lot of one-touch passing, a lot of movement. And that has caused something that has fell probably into Arsenal's favour, given the way West Brom did set up with the high back three and with the line, which was very easy for Arsenal to pounce upon. And with a lot of youngsters as well, it was something that really fell into McLaughlin's favour. And I am really happy as an Arsenal fan to see this victory. So moving on to what I think it means for Miklos Setsa, does he mean he can get some business going on versus Manchester City? Well, it's going to be a tough ask. We all know it's going to be a tough ask. Manchester City is a different ball game. Manchester City is a different level and it's 10 times better than what we saw from West Brom. They can play a high line and also can easily get caught out. One thing I realised for sure is that when Arsenal do score first, there's a bit more confidence and we need confidence versus Manchester City because they might score before us and we need to have that motivation and determination to really show some passion and get that victory over Manchester City to really make a statement like Tottenham did last time around and this will be very useful moving for Miklov's career as the Arsenal manager.